Hey, this is Nick Thorne from Wing for Life, and this video is an interview with James Grundy, who is one of the founders and owners of the brand Conrad. Now, Conrad make uh, wings, foils, and boards, and they're based in Australia. Now, we did this interview with a live audience down at SHQ Board Sports in Sandringham in the city of Melbourne. We had a bunch of wing foilers in the room and we really enjoyed having a quick chat with James to hear about his story and some of the things that got in development. And I really hope that you enjoy this interview as well. Hey guys, how's it going? You guys, yeah, sweet. Hopefully you can hear him. I'll just boost that a bit. Thanks for tuning in. Tune in, man. We've got a bunch of people down here interested um, in Wingham. I guess they're interested in Wingham and beer and pizza. Uh, yeah, man. We, if you could just give us a quick overview of the Conrad brand. You started Conrad, man. Like, just a quick overview. Of, I know you guys do wings, foils, and boards, and you're an Australian brand. I'll just tell everyone. But just, you know, um, did you start it, man? Where is it now? We started about six years ago making foils. Uh, we started off making kite foils and then we slowly branched into the surf foil market and we really just concentrated on Australia um, previously. Now we're branching out everywhere. But, um, yeah, we're making surf foils, we're making wings, we're making the boards, um, and we're one of those rare companies that does everything in-house. So the crew knows do uh, everything except for the hand wing design um, 100% hand wings. We're doing about probably half of that, um, but we do have a newer model coming out, which we're developing from the ground up as well. And so you started Conrad yourself, man. Like, how did the brand come about to be? <laughs> I actually started as a bit of a side hustle. Um, everyone's probably got a side hustle going on, and um, my background's um, surfing, sailing, you know, that kind of stuff, engineering, and just general tinkering and playing around. So I started it out of a passion for just being around the water and hoping it would grow into something one day that would become a full-time job and yeah six years later it's kicking my ass on a daily basis and I'm I just don't have enough hours in the day so yeah it's pretty fun yeah and COVID's affected you guys in terms of yeah you know, shipments and stuff like that COVID's been terrible so uh we produce everything uh, like all our prototypes and and you know bits and pieces that we test all here in house in Sydney. Um, but then producing overseas for production has been a nightmare. I mean, I've had shipments that are probably four months late now. And yeah, some people are really understanding about it. Other people, not so, so they're yelling at me. So it's been difficult. And so wings taken off down here and it's getting pretty big in Sydney. Like where do you see the sport of wing foiling going? And must growing. You, you told me that you used to do surfboard and stuff and now you pretty much just do wing foiling stuff. Like, where do you see yeah, I, um, I, I kind of was doing a lot of kite stuff and, um, yeah, pretty much phasing all that out now. Um, are you all you guys winging or are you just kind of interested in getting into winging? Put your hands up. Who's, who's yeah. winging? Maybe, yeah. Who, yeah. Everybody. Oh, yeah. Everybody. And, and who, who used to be a kiter? Yeah, and, and some, some of you are brand new for winging and you're from maybe some are from windsurfing, right? <laughs> yeah, windsurfing. Yeah. You'll definitely know that. So I, um, I broke, just so you guys know a bit about my background, I broke my leg about three years ago and I've been off the water um, and I was just getting my teeth into this wing stuff as it was kind of starting to come out and I was really excited about it. Um, I thought it'd be amazing. Like I was an avid kiter, I was... You know, I'd love to go out doing mega loops and just thrashing myself. Um, and I thought that, uh, sorry, wing surfing would be like this gateway sport. It would be something that would, you know, people would come into. It would be really easy to kind of try and safe and they would either then go for kite surfing or then go for wind surfing or wind foiling or whatever. Um, but now it's turned into its own identity. And, I mean, I started a group back in the early days and it's got 12,000 members on it now and it's just, I mean, I get – 50 to 80 people a day joining it. It's just blowing up. And I think it's because wing surfing is just, it's its one of those sports, it's just so easy and safe. You know, like I can do it. My girlfriend who's, you know, much lighter than me, she can ride the same equipment and, you know, I don't have to put her through 12 hours of lessons. You know, she can just jump on it, have a go. It's fairly safe. You know, the only danger is falling on the board or the foil. So it really is a very... It's an amazing sport, like for, for the riders in the shops. 
So speaking of foils, man, I'm keen to know how do you actually design the foils? Like, there's a fair bit of math and stuff in designing a hydrofoil. Like, do you just did you slap it together and go and write it? Like, how do you actually? <laughs> so, um, yeah, foil design. We, we made some absolutely terrible foils for the first foils that we made. They were, I mean, I would make foils and I was out there kite foiling with them and they would make noises and they'd scare the fishermen away and the fish, and I'm sure even the sharks were scared of them. They were that crazy. But um, we generally, like, we put everything through CAD. So um, the company is basically myself, my mother, and my brother all working together. It's a family business. Um, so my brother's a chemical engineer. My background's engineering and fitter machinist. So... I do all the machining and the hands-on prototypes and a lot of the sketching. My brother is amazing on CAD, so he does a lot of the 3D modelling. Um, so we basically come up with an idea, we draw it, we might print some wing samples and then laminate them. Um, sometimes we're machining wood, we're doing like all sorts of ways um, to make these wings. Um, and we come up with something that's fairly close to what would be produced out of a mould and then we go out and test it and... Um, some of them break, some of them work well, some of them don't work so well, but um, it's never ending, you know, design process of testing and, and polishing. And yeah, it's fun and heartbreaking at the same time. You, you know, you get these wings that you try and they look amazing, and you go out, they're not so good. And then you come back and you tweak it and then it gets to a point where it's it's really good. Like our SS wing range right now is it's an amazing ride. It's super easy and surfing and pumps well. So yeah, it's really nice to see something go from like concept to reality it's pretty pretty yeah, rewarding. It's designing an actual wing you know that's actually going to give you the right amount of lift there's a fair bit of math and stuff behind that so yeah it's just one um, thing another i guess and you build off your previous designs then eh? yeah so i mean there's a lot of things so if in case you've never looked into wings i mean they're, they're all basically NACA profiles um and you know this is all developed by um i think it was the us that developed the NACA profiles um there are water specific ones there's air specific ones i mean we we choose profiles that we like. We even tried developing our own profiles, but the NACA ones work so much better. So if you look at the wings, you'll notice they're all quite different thickness-wise and profile-wise. Wise, they have their drafts in different positions and so on. So it comes down to, as a designer, like, say, Axis and Armstrong and us and whoever else, everyone has what they like to ride. So, you know, Army, for instance, I'm not sure. I've, I've ridden one of his foils and I liked it. It's quite nice. Um, but what he likes compared to what I like in a foil would probably be quite different. Like, and it's you like can't wing, you can't change the basic wing design too much. So, you know, you, you, uh, you, you can, you can, I mean, you've got your plan form, your outline, um, and then but your NACA profile generally stays the same throughout. Um, and then it comes down to you know, how much curve you put in it and so on. So all these things change a lot. So it comes down to figuring out what you like out of all this testing and then kind of, pushing it into something that's going to be produced. Yeah, it's just amazing to hear the amount of, you know, effort and um, stuff that goes into making some of these products that we all just sort of sometimes jump on and just ride and appreciate, that don't appreciate, you know, just cruise along like sick. But it's amazing how much goes into it. Yeah, it's funny because I get riders who, especially in my local areas, a lot of riders, they know me um, and they always say, oh, you should have done this, you should have done that and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I kind of did some of these things, but some of these things you don't really understand how it works. So they're always telling me how I should be doing things. And some of them I tell them, well, if you want to do that, maybe you should go and start your own foil company, okay? So yeah. Yeah. It, is, it is a very, very difficult job to, to produce something for, for an end customer as well. Yeah, definitely. And talking about stuff you're producing, what are you working on for the future? I know you're um, talking about some new wings or stuff. What Can you tell us anything that, you know, anything that's going to really change the market a bit? Um, you know, um, I mean, got different versions, but what, like, what do you see that's going to majorly change the wings or the boards? Or um, for us, I mean, I see a lot of companies doing a lot of different things. I mean, we we've got quite a large range for someone for a company which is so small. So to develop a new range every year, so we're up to S six at the moment, which is season uh, sorry season five. S six is what I'm currently working on for next summer, which will be released in uh, September ish. Um, so we've got you know a couple of new handheld, you know, the inflatable wings we're working on. Um, we're always tweaking those. And that's it's kind of an inter interesting story. The factory which makes those for us was a kite factory. And, I mean, you guys have probably all been there from the start and hope people are doing wing surfing as a sport in general. But these guys, I, I talked them into making wings and um, 
they didn't, they really didn't want to do it. They said, no, it's going to be a fad. It's going to blow over. And, and now like wings is their biggest product they're producing you know, way more than what kites were. So the factory is just crazy busy with wings. So we're, we actually help them develop wings as well, which is a generic wing they sell to other customers. So there's that, um, that wing project. And then there's the foil project where we have, you know, full carbon foils and we have alloy foils and, um, they're all modular, so the wings fit across the board. Um, and then the board program is um, its getting a lot of work this year as well. I mean, if you've seen our boards in the shop, you'll probably notice how different our hull shapes are to everyone else's. Yeah, we've planned to stay up there, actually. So we, we've got it out, mate. We've got, to, we've got to get a couple of stuff out. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, yeah, anything else you wanted to say to the crowd tonight, James? Um, yeah, thanks for coming. And um, I mean, these events are amazing. Support the shops because there's not a lot of shops that do events like this. I used to run a retail shop as well, and I would run events like crazy, and it takes a lot of effort to put it on. So, I mean, I wish I was down there having beer and pizza with you guys. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, James is annoyed about not being in beer and pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love beer and pizza. Um, but I'm going to be down there probably next summer. So, I mean, I'd love Nick for you to organize another event, maybe a ride day or something. We can all go and ride. And yeah, I mean, I love going and riding with the wing surface because everyone's got a different take on it. Everyone's got a different style and it's so new that you just learn so much riding with different people. It's a lot of fun going with everyone as well. So we're finding that everyone's sort of grouping together saying where you're going out and we all go out together and harass the uh, wing surface. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, cheers, James. We might leave it there, man, to keep it brief. But, yeah, thanks for your time. Uh, it's been nice yeah. to chat to you tonight, so I appreciate that. And yeah, glad thanks, we, Brad. Glad we got the Zoom to work, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great to see an Australian brand um, in, in amongst all the international brands here with us. So, yeah, just keep doing your thing. It's great. Yeah, thanks, guys. I look forward to seeing you on the water. Cheers, mate. Yeah. See ya. See ya.